Hello, we are now in section six of the SAM certification training course. Software asset management specialist, that is. We are in particularly in the tier two implementation practice section of the course. And we will be doing this in two parts. We are currently in part one. Before I move on to the tier two practice, let us get a quick summary of what we did in tier one. In tier one, we identified the SAM assets and got them under control. Meaning, the outcome there was trustworthy data defined by core SAM records and license compliance, which means that you have, you know what you have so that you can manage it. If you don't know what we have, then we can't manage it. So that is tier one, which means that in tier one, we developed, implemented, and communicated the policies, procedures, and processes for SAM, clarified the competencies, made an improvement plan, identified SAM assets, recorded the SAM assets accurately and enabled license compliance. By improvement plan, I mean moving from tier zero to tier one. Some of the core processes that we have there were change management, core data management, license management, and security management. We also looked at the various roles, such as the software asset manager, application manager, SAM tool administrator, project manager, software and license analyst, and the audit manager. There are also some other uh, all such as the evolving technologies expert, licensing expert, contract negotiator, and the finance administrator. In tier one, they enable the SAM framework to provide and prove compliance, particularly data quality, data accessibility, and data accuracy, meaning they should be up to date. The importance of various tools were also stressed, such as license optimization tool and others. A policy in tier one could be something like policies related to use of personal software, shareware, freeware, illegal pirated software, procurement approvals process, copying software and data maintenance. There were certain competencies necessary in tier one, such as understanding of the license structure, the entitlements for the software usage, the policies, the infrastructure data, and the data analysis of everything in SAM. In a nutshell, the core process for tier one are to plan the where and why, then the how, who, and when, and then the expected result. The core processes, we also seen them in tier one. They were SAM asset identification, software asset inventory management, SAM asset record verification, meaning these record and manage the inventory and the assets list. Then we also did the software licensing compliance, conformance verification for SAM, meaning moving towards the licensing compliance. And of course, we also had the SAM repository management. Once we have captured all the data, and uh, we need to enable some of the software licenses for use. So we have the inventory on one hand where it has all the IT assets, including the software assets, but we have the repository where we have only the enabled assets for use. Just a little bit more, SAM achieves some key benefits in tier one, such as management and control with reliable data, uh, creation of compliance reports on this reliable data, identification of actual business and financial benefits. And it is therefore important that core SAM records and license compliance is established, first of all, in tier one. And that relies heavily on the implementation of the tier one processes and the control activities, such as the roles and responsibilities, the KPI, the reporting and, and other policies. And there are some enabling activities, such as the tools and automation, um, uh, the data information, uh, work and uh, understanding the employees and their competencies. With that solid background in tier one, hopefully let's move on to tier two. What do we learn in tier two? You will be focusing on the tier two processes, the, the definition of tier two, the tier two primary roles, the activities involved, how to implement them, the key performance indicators for tier two and when I mentioned the tier two primary roles, we look at specific uh, roles and we also look at tier two specific processes. And as I mentioned before, how to implement the tier two. Let's take stock of what happened with universal exports. The tier one was implemented. It was a huge success. They were able to produce the compliance report for the first time. Uh, and that was enabled by R. Sterling and his team of consultants. And they delivered more than what was expected. Now they decide to formalize the SAM work within the framework and make it tier two. Which means that there is probably 
a need to establish a proper project organization to deliver an even more mature SAM organization. So tier two allows us to move from the tier one where everything is established in a basic way and to more, move on to a more mature SAM environment and practices. Objective at tier two, establish practical management around SAM, meaning move on to better management. Scope, what is done in tier two? Policies, procedures, and processes for the SAM framework. These were already developed in tier one, but they will continue in tier two. The competencies needed to be understood, clarified, and improve the competencies as well to come to tier one. So that remains also in tier two. Communicate the policies, procedures, and processes which came from tier one, they will remain in tier two. But what we have particularly in tier two is optimize and integrate between the SAM system and the other systems which are related to SAM. Similarly, optimize and integrate between the SAM processes and related processes.